the same level of iman outside of Ramadan, that's impossible. The goal of Ramadan is we move up a few notches, we go up maybe a hundred degrees, when Ramadan finishes, we don't come crashing down to where we began, but we're at a higher level than when we began. So, my short reminder today, Alhamdulillah, today we're praying Fajr in this gathering. And the number of people we have is perhaps similar to the number of people we have in Jumu'ah outside of the month of Ramadan. So one reminder to myself and all of you, if there's only one action that you will stick to outside of Ramadan, let it be this one that you're doing right now. If you will cling on to only one action outside of Ramadan that you're doing inside of Ramadan, let it be this one here, which is to hold fast to Salat al-Fajr in the Jama'ah, in the Masjid. Let me remind myself and all of you of 10 blessings of praying Fajr in Jama'ah. 10 blessings that are mentioned in the Sunnah for praying Fajr by Jama'ah so that insha'Allah ta'ala this will be an incentive for me and you to try our best to pray Fajr outside of Ramadan as we are praying it inside of Ramadan. The first blessing our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من صلى الفجر في جماعة فهو في ذمة الله تعالى. Whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah shall be under the protection, the dhimma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be careful if any of you challenges Allah's protection. Meaning, O Muslims, Anybody who prays Fajr in Jama'ah, you had better be careful you don't irritate them because Allah is protecting them. Whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah shall be under the protection of Allah, meaning for the rest of that day. So the Prophet is telling those who don't pray Fajr in Jama'ah, be careful you don't bother, you don't irritate, you don't harm the ones who pray Fajr because if you do so, then know that they are under Allah's protection and whoever is under under Allah's protection, what is going to happen to the one who tries to challenge them? So the first and one of the greatest blessings is that whoever prays Fajr in the Jama'ah will be under the protection of Allah. Number two, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the two rak'ahs before Fajr are better than this whole world and all that it contains. We're talking about the two sunnas before Fajr. The Prophet ﷺ said, those two raka'ahs are more beloved to Allah than this whole dunya wa ma fiha. If that is the blessing of the two raka'ahs before Fajr, what do you think is the blessing of Fajr itself? If the blessing of the two sunnas is more beloved to Allah than this whole world and all that is in it, then what do you think will be the blessing of the actual Fajr prayer itself? Number three, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah, it is as if he has prayed the whole night in Qiyam. In other words, if you pray Fajr in Jama'ah, you come to the Masjid and you pray Fajr, then it is as if you are getting the reward of Qiyamul Layl for the entire night. You will ask, but tonight we prayed Qiyam and we prayed Fajr. The response, you will get even more reward then. So the one who does not pray Qiyam and he only prays Fajr in the Jama'ah, he shall get the reward of having prayed the whole night in Tahajjud. As for the one who prays Tahajjud and then also Fajr, they will get an even more reward. And also my dear brothers and sisters, realize and remember that Fajr in Jama'ah is more beloved to Allah than the entire Qiyam that we are doing. It is narrated that one of the sons of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, that he prayed Tahajjud for much of the night. Then he fell asleep and he wasn't able to wake up for the Fajr in the Jama'ah. So he woke up and prayed it at home. When Imam Ahmad found out, he said, Wallahi, if you had slept the whole night and prayed Fajr in Jama'ah, that would have been more beloved to me than you prayed to Hajjud and you overslept Fajr in Jama'ah. So the third blessing, as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah, it is as if he has gotten the rewards of the entire Qiyamul Layl. The fourth blessing, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Sahih Muslim, Man Bardain, Whoever prays the two 
cool prayers. By cool, we don't mean the vernacular of the teenagers cool. Cool here means when the atmosphere is cool. And our scholars interpret cool here to mean the prayer of Fajr and the prayer of Asr, which is twilight, the sun is setting, the sun is rising. These are the Bardain. It's slightly chillier than other times. Whoever prays the two cooler prayers, which is Fajr and Asr, that person shall enter Jannah. So there is a guarantee from Allah, the one who prays Fajr and the one who prays Asr, they will enter Jannah. Point number five, which is following from the last point, but not exactly the same. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَنْ يَلِجَ النَّارِ the one that the Lanyali Jannah Man Sal al Fajra wal Asr. Whoever prays Fajr and Asr shall never enter the fire of hell. You will ask me, isn't it the same entering Jannah point number four, not going to Jahannam point number five? The response is no, because there will be some people who will enter Jannah, but only after having been punished in Jahannam. We don't want to be amongst them. There will be a group of people, they will enter Jannah eventually. But because of their sins, they will go through Jahannam. We don't want to be amongst them. So it's not the same to be promised Jannah. A higher promise, you shall not go to Jahannam. And that is also promised for the ones who pray Fajr. So whoever prays the two prayers of Fajr and Asr, لَنْ يَلِي جَنَّارِ He shall never go through the fire of hell. Point number six, blessing number six for praying Fajr in Jama'ah. Our Prophet ﷺ said, the most difficult salah for the hypocrites is Salatul Fajr. So if they only knew how blessed it is, they would come even if they have to crawl from their beds. Walau habwan, if they have to crawl, they would come for Salatul Fajr. So what this means, the one who prays Fajr regularly, inshallah he can never be a munafiq. The one who prays Fajr in jama'ah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the most difficult prayer for the munafiqeen is the fajr of the jama'ah. That's the most difficult salah. So therefore, our scholars say, one of the signs that you are not a hypocrite, one of the ways to battle hypocrisy, to fight against nifaq, is to pray fajr in jama'ah regularly. And so we should try our best because all of us, wallahi, we are worried about hypocrisy. We're worried about nifaq. One of the ways to fight against it, we pray Fajr in Jama'ah on a daily basis. Point number seven, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah and then sits fi majlisihi where he prayed and he continues to do dhikr until the sun rises. So until basically Salatul Duha time. So he sits in Jama'ah, he finishes Jama'ah, and he just sits there doing dhikr until the sun rises. The Prophet ﷺ said, that person shall get the reward of hajjatun tam, as if he has done a full hajj. This hadith is in Tirmidhi, and it is hasan, it is authentic. So the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us not only to pray fajr in Jama'ah, but to do some adhkar after, and make it longer. And by the way, sitting after salah and doing dhikr this is one of the greatest good deeds to raise your ranks higher than from the level of islam to the level of iman and ihsan our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that of the greatest of good deeds is to sit after the salawat wal adhkaru ba'da salawat to do the dhikr after the salawat our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever sits after the salah and he does dhikr the angels continue to ask forgiveness for him as long as he doesn't stand up so one of the things that we should strive to do for all of the salawat is when the imam says salam we don't rush back to our lives give ourselves a few minutes give ourselves some time because that is the time when we think we've done something khalas we can turn our backs and leave no this is what separates the muslim from the mu'min nothing wrong if you have to go you have to go but if you have time and if you're able to after the salawat is one of the best times to do the adhkar, to do dhikr, to do dua, to ask Allah's forgiveness. And there are so many adhkar, perhaps another lecture will give about some of the adhkar the Prophet would do after every single salah. And this is for all of the five salawat. And one of them that we should all do, our Prophet said, whoever recites ayatul kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa wa al-hayyu qiyum, after every fard salah, 
the only thing that is between him and Jannah is his own death. What a beautiful hadith. The only thing that will prevent this person from entering Jannah is his own death. So if you make it a habit after every single salah that you recite Ayatul Kursi, every salah you do Ayatul Kursi after that, make it your habit, then insha'Allah ta'ala this is another good deed. But especially after Fajr, if you sit and you make Adhkar. And this is the, the characteristic of the righteous people before us, that especially in the early morning, it is narrated once that Ibn al-Qayyim visited his Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the greatest scholars of this ummah, and he visited him after Fajr, and he visited him, you know, when the sun was risen, he thought he would be, you know, awake and about. He was sitting in the same place of Fajr doing adhkar, hours after Fajr, and he motioned, you sit down. Ibn al-Qayyim waited, waited, waited. Then Ibn Taymiyyah turned around, and he just made an excuse, and he said, this is my spiritual breakfast. If I don't have my breakfast, for the rest of the day, my soul feels fatigued. You know, outside of Ramadan, if you don't have breakfast, you go to work, you get a headache. You don't feel good. You just feel miss something is missing. Ibn Taymiyyah said, this dhikr after Fajr, this is the breakfast for my ruh. If I don't feed my ruh, the rest of the day, I feel irritable. Something is not right. This is the characteristic of the righteous. The Prophet and the Sahaba would sit after Fajr and do adhkar. And especially as we said, until the sun rises. If you're able to do that once in a while, obviously in the world we live in, it's not possible every day. But if you're able to do that once in a while, then you will get the reward of a full hajj as our Prophet wasallam said. That is point number, who's counting? What number do we get to? Seven. Okay, I'm going to quiz you guys. Let's see who's memorized all of this. Point number eight. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yata'aqabuna fiikum malaikatu layli wa malaikatu nahar." The angels of the night and the angels of the day they take turns writing your deeds. Subhanallah. Even the angels take shifts. It's not just me and you. But the angels don't take shifts because they're tired. The angels take shifts to worship Allah better. So they come and they do, do their deeds of writing our deeds, and then they worship Allah. That is their break. Their break is the perpetual worship of Allah. Then they come back to monitor our deeds. So all of us have two shifts of angels. And when the first batch comes up, the Prophet said it comes up at Fajr time. And Allah asks them, and Allah knows the answer. And Allah asks them, and Allah doesn't need to ask them, how did you find my servants? So the angels say, we found them, and they were praying salah. Then the next batch will come, and they will come at asr time, and the switch will take over. They will come up, and Allah will say, how did you leave my servants? And he knows how they left them, and he doesn't need to ask. And the angels say, we left them, and they were praying. So we came, they were praying. We left, they were praying. So fajr and asr, if the people are praying those regularly, then the continual record is being written they are praying they are praying we left them they are praying we came to them they are praying so Fajr and Asr once again the Prophet linked them together and he said the report goes up to Allah and the angels say we found them they were praying we left them they were praying we came back to them they were praying so Fajr and Asr again that is point number eight point number nine our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Hadith is Muslim Imam Ahmad. Bashir al Mashaina fi Zulam bin Nur al Tami yawm al Qiyamah. Give glad tidings. Give good news. I give you good news. Be happy. Rejoice. To those who walk to the Masajid at night, that they shall have perfect light on Judgment Day. Bin Nur al Tami yawm al Qiyamah. So those that are walking, in our case, driving the car and it's night, there's no sun. We go, and of course, these two timings are Isha and Fajr. This hadith praises Isha and Fajr. Other hadith praises Fajr and Asr. But pretty much all the hadith pray Fajr. The most praise is for Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah. So we have hadith for all of them, but Fajr has the most. So in this hadith, what do we learn? Bashir al-Mashaina fi dhulam Those that are walking in darkness, give them glad tiding that they shall have perfect light on judgment day what is this a reference to in the quran we learn that on judgment day all lights will be extinguished all light will be distinguished there will be no sun there will be no moon everything will be immersed into darkness and at that point in time, the voice will call out, 
go find your way to Jahannam, to Jannah. Go find your way to Jannah. And in that darkness, all of mankind must cross over the Sirat to get to the Qantara, to get to Jannah. How will you find the Sirat, much less cross over the Sirat and get to Jannah in complete darkness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمَ جَنَّاتِ On that day, the believing men and women, they shall see light coming from themselves. They will become a light. So on that day, when the hisab has been finished, and when all of the scrolls have been tied up, and when all of the good deeds have been judged, the final act of judgment day will be to cross the sirat. That act will not take place in light. There will be darkness. And the light that will come, will come from every single person, himself or herself. You will become your own torch. You will emanate your own light. And the person's light will be proportional to your own level of Iman. The stronger was your Iman, the more the light will be. And the weaker your Iman, the weaker the light will be. So much so, the Prophet ﷺ said, there will be people, the only light they will have will come from their toe. It will flicker on. They will take one step forward. It will shut off. And they will not know if it will come on again or not. Those are going to be the lowest of the low. And there will be those who will have no light whatsoever. These are the hypocrites. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions them that يوم يقول المنافقون والمنافقات the hypocrites are going to say للذين آمنوا to those who believe انظرونا نقتبس من نوركم wait for us we want to follow your light we don't have any light you guys have light just like we pretended to be believers and interacted with you we benefited from you physically in this world now let us do the same in the akhirah we will benefit from your light without having any light but allah will say on judgment day there will be a wall allah will place it on the one side will be mercy on the other side will be adab so here in this hadith we learn how do we get perfect light on judgment day? One of the easiest ways to have a flashlight that will be not only any light, a nur, a tam, perfect light. So the one who prays Fajr regularly in the masjid, insha'Allah ta'ala, they will have a perfect light on judgment day. And that is one of the best blessings of Salat al-Fajr in the masjid. What number are we on? Nine. Now we're on the last one, ten. Number ten. And number ten is the sweetest of them all. Number ten is the greatest of all blessings. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ You shall see your Lord as you see the full moon right now. And he pointed to the full moon. It was the 14th of the month. He pointed to the full moon. And he said, like you see that moon, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَن تُضَامُونَ or لَن تُضَارُونَ Both rewards are there. You're not going to be fighting one another. You're not going to be jostling and shoving. Like the moon is there. We're not fighting to see the moon. All of us see the moon moon equally well. No matter where we are, we see the moon. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you shall see your Lord if you're righteous. May Allah make us amongst them. Like you see the moon. Then he told us the main way, the main connection, the main condition if we want to get that blessing. فَإِنِ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَلَّا تُغْلَبُ عَلَى صَلَاةٍ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا فَفْعَلُوا So make sure that sleep does not overtake you for the prayers before the sun rises and before the sun sets. Subhanallah. The number one cause for the blessing to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know what is the blessing to see Allah? It is a blessing that is even more powerful than Jannah itself. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً those who do good shall get Jannah and more than Jannah. They shall get Ziyadah. What could possibly be more than Jannah? 
the Prophet ﷺ said, a ziyada is to look at the beautiful face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wujuhun yawma idin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. On that day, faces will be bright because they will be looking at their Lord. And the famous hadith of Ammar ibn Yasir reported in Sunan al-Nisa'i, our Prophet Sallallahu used to make dua to Allah. What a beautiful dua. And, and say ameen to this dua. Allahumma inna nas'aruka ladhata nadari ila wajhika al-kareem. Say ameen. Oh Allah, we ask you for the sweetness of looking at your face. This is a prophetic hadith. Allahumma inna nas'aruka ladhata nadari ila wajhika al-kareem. To look at the face of Allah is the greatest sweetness. To see that face, it is better than even Jannah itself. As Allah says in the Quran, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا They will have whatever they want in Jannah. وَلَدَيْنَا مزيد, And we have something even more than anything they can desire. What can possibly be more than what you can desire? The mazid once again is to look at the beautiful face of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And that is linked directly to Salat Al-Fajr and Salat Al-Asr. Now, one point before I finish for today. Why are so many of these hadith? Mentioning Asr as well. We understand Fajr. Fajr is definitely an issue. But why Asr? I will explain. In those days, the Sahaba, the people, would basically work for, for the, the day and they would work throughout the, the time of heat and whatnot. And they would then come home in the early afternoon and they would take what we call a siesta. They would take a nap. This was the culture of the Arabs. It is still the culture in many lands of taking a sleep or a nap. And that nap, it's very easy to prolong it. It's very easy to go until you're almost going to wake up before sunset. So the Prophet ﷺ said, wake up for Asr as well. In our culture, Asr generally we don't go to sleep in. And we are wide awake. So we're wondering why is Asr so highly praised? But that is because in their culture, both Fajr and Asr were those that they would have to battle. In our culture, it is primarily Fajr. And Alhamdulillah, Asr, we're usually home and we are praying Asr on time. Generally, that is the case. So the takeaway from this entire reminder is that Alhamdulillah, all of us are praying Fajr in this masjid. We sense the beauty. We feel uplifted. My humble reminder to myself and all of you is that let this be a perpetual habit of ours outside of the month. Yes, wallahi, it is a sacrifice. We have to drive 10-15 minutes. We sacrifice of our sleep. But I sh assure you, and I tell you, and anybody will tell you, those who pray Fajr regularly in the masjid, the peace that you get in your life, and the feeling of fulfillment, and the feeling of, of, of accomplishment, as Ibn Taymiyyah said, that is your spiritual breakfast. And a day will come when, inshallah, you will become routine to pray Fajr. The day that you accidentally miss it, you're going to feel irritable. You're going to feel itchy. Something's not right. I missed my spiritual breakfast. Give it a try for a few days. It's going to be difficult the first few days after Ramadan. But once you get into the hang of it, you will look forward to praying Fajr in the masjid. And you will experience the blessings that our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays Fajr in the masjid, he will be in the protection of Allah for the rest of the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who regularly pray as many salawat as possible and especially the Fajr Salah in the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring this month of Ramadan to a conclusion with all of our sins forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those whose fasting was accepted, whose qiyam was accepted, whose Quran was accepted, whose dua was accepted. May Allah bless us to be standing in dua on Laylatul Qadr May Allah accept our du'as of Laylatul Qadr. May Allah write us for those who have been saved from the fire of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the last phrase that we ever say on this earth to be the shahada of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah cause us to live as Muslims, to die as mu'mins, and to be resurrected with the prophets and the companions. And what a noble companionship they are. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.